right, good evening everyone and welcome to tonight's Board of Ed meeting. The date is Tuesday, December 12th, 2017. And I want to remind you all to turn off your cell phone as this meeting is being recorded. Ellen, can you please do the roll call? Thank you, Mrs. Granato. Mr. Cassio? Present. Mrs. Fitzpatrick? Present. Mr. Healy? Here. Ms. McCurdy? Here. Ms. Moon? Here. Mr. Morris? Here. Mrs. Paradise? Present. Vice Chairperson, Mr. Hill? Here. Chairperson, Mrs. Granato? Present. And Weathersfield High School Student Representative, Mr. Justin Bianchi? Present. All present. Thank you, Ellen. I would like Haley Sousa and Lily Staubach, their students from the Highcrest School, to come on up and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Nicely done. Okay, thank you, Haley and Lily. Thank you. And thanks, Mrs. O'Connor, for bringing them. Thank you. All right, Mr. Emmett, we have a student recognition tonight, too. We do this evening. I have some upstanding citizens from uh, Weathersfield High School. If I could please have them come up to the podium along with teacher John Sand. <clears throat> Uh, good evening. This year we started a new program called the, uh, it's called the Jets Upstander of the Week program. And the uh, New York Jets had a kind of an anti-bullying program that they had started a year ago. And uh, I had signed up and participated and they had sent some materials. And uh, in the last 10 or 12 years, we've kind of made it a habit of trying to continually engage that topic so that it doesn't become an issue at the high school. Uh, going back to the Names program, where we have kids in Camp Anytown. We have the Bridges program. We were the first high school in the country to have a chapter of Athlete Ally. And kind of keeping with that pattern, we, we got involved with the Jets. Um, and that was fine. And they sent something out this summer and said, listen, we're having a symposium down at MetLife Stadium. Come down to the stadium, panel of experts, um, some, some renowned experts from across the country, and also the, one of the quarterbacks for the Jets that played for 10 years, uh, Chad Pennington. So I went down. And uh, we had a great, great interaction. It was a great symposium, a lot of give and take, a lot of interesting stuff. I got in a little bit of trouble because I caused a ruckus towards the end uh, because one of the speakers uh, said that the, the key to not having bullying being a problem at your school is to have a relationship-driven school. And I, and I let out this guffaw a little bit louder than I thought, and everybody looked at me, and I explained to the guy next to me, I said, if I had a dollar for every time the principal has drilled that into our heads at the high school, I could retire by now. So it was nice to hear somebody else say it, an expert in the research and all that kind of stuff. Um, at the end of the night, I walked away with 16 t-shirts, 16 bumper stickers, 48 New York Jets tickets, and 16 parking passes. And once a week, they asked us to identify a student who was the upstander of the week, someone who has stood up for uh, someone else, who has helped kind of prevent bullying from going on. Um, ironically, we, we don't have any kids in that situation. We, we didn't have a bullying situation where somebody stepped in uh, because it's, not, it's just not part of our culture. But what I got is, a, is nominations from teachers where they had seen kids just really being great kids, going above and beyond to, to reach out to somebody, somebody who was new to the school, somebody who, was, who has some difficulties and, and challenges that other, than other kids don't have. And all of these kids did that. And, uh, and it's been really rewarding. A bunch of them have gone down to see the Jets play with their free tickets and their free parking passes, and they all got their shirt on, and, and uh, we, we put them all out. So um, Rode to Giacomo, Jarrett Livingston, Barbara Rodriguez, Hannah McGrath, Trinity White and Olivia Zorzola, and uh, they're the ones that, uh, that came tonight, and uh, we couldn't be more proud of these kids. Really, really Congratulations. Good. All right. Any questions for the, for the group? Anybody have any questions? Yeah, I have one. Uh, you let him wear that T-shirt yeah. here, <laughs> especially after last night. <laughs> I don't think he gets the opportunity to wear it all that often. We didn't let him wear it when we, when we took the Jets picture for him. That wouldn't go. So. So John, could you tell us again, I think you did at the beginning, where did you get this idea from? How did you follow through? 
I'm always looking in the summertime. I'm always looking for new things that we can bring to the school. And uh, I kind of have been, I guess, that guy over the last couple of years that kind of finds these things. And so uh, it's the same way I found Athlete Ally and just looking for something for kids to, to make our place, our school a little better than it is already. And uh, that popped up. And he like said the first year it was okay. But then when they start offering tickets for kids, now they're, they're the New York Jets put their money where their mouth is. And no offense to Patriots fans, but I immediately went to the Patriots website. So I said, okay, they got to have something too. It was only for Massachusetts uh, residents. So we went with the Jets, even though it's a little bit of a drive down there. So. Okay. It's cer certainly better than the Giants this year as well. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't have predicted it. Um, I, I just want to say, you know, students, I, I look out at you and I see future leaders. And I have to say, I actually see you all on Blue Eagle News when I watch uh, each week. So I'm familiar with, uh, with what you've done, and I'm familiar with the fact that you are truly leaders at Weathersfield High School. So I say congratulations and thank you for doing the good work that you're doing at Weathersfield High School. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Thank you again. That was great. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Nice job. Okay, next on tonight's agenda is the approval of the minutes of the regular Board of Ed meeting on November 28, 2017. Are there any corrections? Okay, may I have a motion to approve? So moved. A second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Abstain. Abstain. Okay. Those minutes are approved. Is there anyone wishing to make a public comment? Come on up to the podium and state your name and address. And may I remind you that public, oops. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, we had another meeting, I'm sorry. Um, we also have to do the approvals of our special Board of Ed meeting on December 6, 2017. Um, are there any corrections? To those minutes? No, that was yesterday. Move to approve. No. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? Abstain. So those minutes are approved. Okay, so now we can go on. Is there anyone wishing to come on up and make a public statement? Come on up to the podium and state your name and address. And may I remind you we have a five minute limit. Thank you. <coughs> okay, so we'll move on to Mr. Emmett. You have communications to share? I do, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, I have a, a lot here this evening, uh, certainly a lot going on within the district. Uh, yesterday, I had the opportunity to attend the annual Weathersfield Transition Academy Holiday Party at the Pitkin Center. Uh, this event brings students together from across the Hartford region that are in um, uh, transitional academies. Uh, Fox 61 Morning News anchor Keith McGivney attended the event. Uh, he produced a story on this event that aired yesterday at 4 o'clock and 5 o'clock. So if you check out the website and search, you should be able to see that on there. Um, it was certainly a great event. Um, with regard to the strategic plan, uh, the strategic plan uh, currently in draft form uh, has gone out to staff and we've gotten feedback from our staff members. We are now preparing that draft strategic plan to go out to the community for feedback. Um, that will be going out, uh, going live on our website, coupled with a survey. In addition to that, I'll be sending out a uh, school messenger message, and we're going to be inviting feedback from, from everyone. I did speak at the uh, quarterly Chamber of Commerce uh, meeting last week about the strategic plan. We're looking for feedback from everyone across the community. So uh, looking forward to wrapping that up and gathering some additional data. Uh, with Mike, that, uh, so people can find that easily. It's on the home page. Is it's, the big word strategic it's plan? not. It's not up yet. It'll be okay. linked right on the front okay. page, so it'll be one of the highlights. So okay. you're not going to have to look yeah. and go do a drop down a lane. Good. Good point. Um, with regard to the budget, the leadership of the board and the town council will be meeting to discuss the budget impacts. Uh, uh, technically or uh, tentatively scheduled now for January 8th. Uh, as was discussed at the last Board of Ed meeting, the state has held back an additional $867,674 in ECS funding that uh, certainly must be addressed. The winter sports regular season begins this week for the girls and boys basketball wrestling uh, teams, the girls and boys indoor track team as well. Uh, for additional schedule information, please visit our athletic page on our website.
As I mentioned earlier, I was able to attend the uh, quarterly meeting of the Chamber of Commerce last Thursday at the Keeney Center. Uh, once again, the Chamber did an outstanding job in support of the annual Holidays on Main event, which took place last Thursday evening. Uh, the calendar this evening uh, before you is the action item for the approval of the 2018-19 as well as 2019-20 school calendars. Um, upon approval this evening, we will be posting up, uh, them up on the website as well uh, for parents to begin planning for those uh, vacations down the road. Uh, <clears throat> I'd like to say thank you to uh, WHS science teacher Joe Kess for hosting the annual Family Night of Code. Mm -hmm. uh, this took place last Thursday in the physics lab and it provided an opportunity for over 40 attendees from grades 1 through 8 to write code. The ability to write code allows for the creation of applications and computer programs and games. In addition to Mr. Kess, WHS student volunteers were also on hand to assist our code writers. Thanks to Justice, Joe, Katie, Heather, Chase, Lily, Andrew, Nick, Mike, Jack, Tyler, AJ, Richard, David, and Brendan. Uh, many of those kids stayed for over three hours to help out. So it was a great, great event. Uh, the WHS Corollaires visited WFSB to tape a performance that will air on WFSB's uh, Better Connecticut program on December 22nd. Uh, please look in your Friday update. I was able to uh, get an advanced copy from Mr. Rio today, so we'll have that in your Friday, uh, your Friday update. Um, also want to speak about the uh, Hartford Current article on December 7th that went online. I believe it was in the print edition on Sunday regarding uh, school district compliance with school safety laws. Um, as I had uh, notified you uh, via email on Friday when that article came out, Wethersfield Public Schools are in compliance with all facets of uh, that law. Um, it's, it's interesting with regard to the submission of this plan. Uh, I will say that uh, Hal Even, our director of security, has been instrumental in making sure that that plan has been submitted. Uh, I would predict that many of the districts that have not met that uh, particular legislation do not have the capacity or the staff uh, to, to be able to do that. In addition to the uh, safety plan that's been submitted to the state, we do participate in lockdown and fire drills. That information is submitted to the state. We also work with both the fire marshal as well as the police department on that. Uh, you may have noticed in the article there was actual reference to Weathersfield with regard to um, how we have our safety plans in each of the cruisers. That has been in place for quite some time. That actually predated Sandy Hook. Um, the other piece that was mentioned in that article was the issue of uh, some districts not applying for funding. Uh, we did. We applied for uh, grant funding. We received grant funding, and that um, has done a lot in terms of uh, fortifying our buildings and enhancing the safety and security in our buildings. Um, I think I speak for all of you on the board that keeping our kids safe and secure is a top priority and one that will continue to be a top priority moving forward. And finally, last but not least, as this is our last regular board meeting uh, prior to the vacation, I'd certainly like to wish everyone a safe and happy holiday season. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Okay. Thank you, Michael. Um, we'll move on to action items tonight. John Cassio, can you read action item 6A for us? Absolutely. <laughs> Move that the Weathersfield Board of Education approve the 2018-2019 and the 2019-2020 school year calendars as recommended by the calendar committee. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, is there any discussion? Michael, I would just like to ask you if you heard back from teachers or administrators on this calendar. Yeah, actually, a very good question. The whole process of the development of this calendar included teachers, members of the WFT, as well as uh, the administrators union. So this was something that was done in conjunction with uh, the multiple bargaining units. Okay, and they had a chance to give feedback from everybody. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Any other discussion? Okay, so all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Motion 6A passes. Great. Diane, would you read motion 6B for us? Move that the Weathersfield Board of Education approve the international school field trip request for Belize during the February recess of 2019, February 15th through the 19th. Okay. Is there a second? Second. All right, any discussion? 
John, are you here to talk? You want to come on up? Sure. And, uh, I understand this is a fabulous trip. And um, have you brought back photos? You know, we, we, uh, yeah. we went two years in a row. We went last year and the year before. And after the first year, I showed up with, I think, 18 kids and took up a bunch of your time. And they all told you great stories and stuff. And then last year, it was like, OK, next week, we'll get it. Next month, we're going to get it. And, and I never brought the kids back. And I felt badly about that. Um, but it's the same trip. Uh, we've done it two times uh, already. And uh, it is just a, a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. It is uh, an amazing place. Uh, if you're my age, it was in the history books when I was growing up as British Honduras. Um, so, because I had never heard of Belize when I was younger. Um, but from climbing up on Mayan pyramids that are a thousand years old to doing a snuba experience where you're, you know, snorkeling out on the, on the near the Great Barrier, second largest barrier reef in the world mm -hmm. after Australia, um, and everything in between. It's an amazing country, um, one of the most diverse countries I've ever been to. 300,000 people. I think I know most of them now after two trips, but um, it, it's a wonderful opportunity for it's the kids. One. And uh, it's something that, to be honest with you, I told the kid, I said, you know what? I, the, the trip thing, I'm getting kind of long in the tooth and that. I don't sleep before the trip. I don't sleep on the trip because I'm a worry wart. And I said, I, I think I'm kind of done with the trip. And I was besieged by kids, like, what are you talking about? That's their, their right, I guess, to go to, to Belize. So anyway, it's back out there again, and, and we would like to go again. OK. It, it, you know, we had it in our packet, and it sounds great. I do have one question. On, on day three, and it's not a travel by a sand hill to KO region. What's a sand hill? A sand hill is just a region in there. We, we'll stop oh, it. There's okay. a couple different it was some places kind that of we stopped. To, no, 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 no. It's the it's a, a waypoint. There's okay. basically only three roads in Belize, and one goes this way, one goes that way, and one goes yeah. in between. Very um, exciting. The itinerary. It's a it's a super trip. It really is for the kids. It really is. Okay. Anyone with any questions or comments? Any chat rooms? You know, I, people I never knew were my friends are, are suddenly very friendly to me after one of those things. So, uh, it's a lot of work, but it's, uh, it's, it's definitely well worth it. I, I just think we should make approval contingent on the fact that we want a slideshow and a presentation when you come back. Right? That is fair. Yeah. There's, there's a, uh, one of the things I always do is I make a video for the kids, and we always have reunions. Matter of fact, the group that, that I brought to the board a year and a half ago, they all came over to my house this summer. We had a big cookout, and we laughed, and we watched our video again. I make a video thing. So it's actually on YouTube if you want to see what we did last year. It's, oh, it's, it's pretty right. neat. Well, it really is fun. And make one for us, and so yeah. bring it. We, bring we, everybody. So absolutely. We can see it. Thank absolutely. You. Sure. Great experience. Anyone else? Okay. So we'll vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Motion six B passes. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. All right, John Morris. Would you read motion six C for us, please? Move that the Weathersfield Board of Education approve the International School Field Trip request for Rome during the April recess of 2019. Okay, is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Yes, Mrs. It, McGrath, would you come up to the podium? <gasps> Mrs. McGrath, Hello. good to see you. Good to see you. I don't have all this fabulous information he has because I haven't done this trip before. This would be our first time. Um, so Mr. Sands was kind enough to um, refer me to the person who's in charge of international trips with EF tours and we figure this would be an excellent opportunity for language acquisition for cultural um, exposure I mean this is a trip of a lifetime we have a very big Italian population here in Wethersfield and many students have expressed interest so I think this would be a great trip and this is also during April of 2019 right I, I could do a slideshow. Yes, same I thing. could do a video. <laughs> I could do pictures. You your, your I'll try to put it on YouTube. You brought back food. Uh, oh, that might be a little. Recipes will work. Yes, absolutely. But again, the itinerary is great. I, I did notice they could get credit too. They can. Do you know? It does say you have to follow some sort of um, requirements in order to get credit for the trip. Credit in terms of. I would assume high school credit. I know they're high school credit. I, I yeah. think we're excited to do this because I think it's a great opportunity, and I think we're kind of missing that piece of it. So EF tours will offer credit to the kids. Um, they have basically kind of like an online class, and they can get a quarter credit or half credit or something in along those lines if they complete all the yeah. program that they do. EF is an accredited uh, institution, just like we're accredited by the NEA SNC. 
uh, EF is accredited by whatever region they're, they're located in. One's in Cambridge, one's in Denver. Okay. So the kids have that option. Okay, thank you. Great. Anybody else with any discussion, comments? Okay, great. You're brave. All right. <laughs> so, I don't know what I'm getting into. <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? Motion 6C passes. Thank you. We'd Thank like you. to see a video too. Absolutely. I'll okay. try to do Facebook Live when we're there. All right. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Um, at tonight's meeting, we have a presentation on the Capital Improvement Plan, and it's presented by Michael Emmett. Michael? Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, I am pinch hitting this evening for Fred Bushy, who uh, could not be with us. Um, this is kind of a first go around of our 10 year capital improvement plan. And I want to begin this evening with a disclaimer that um, this will be the last time that you'll see this plan in this particular format. On Friday afternoon, we received an email from the town that they are revamping their format with regard to capital improvement. So we are taking what we have here and applying it to that new format. We will be submitting that to the town no later than the 22nd of December. The other piece that I want to be clear with you on is that I'd like to, following this particular presentation, um, be able to bring this to the uh, facilities and maintenance committee so that we can have further discussion around the prioritization of what is on uh, this particular plan for, for next year. Um, just in terms of the history, uh, you've seen uh, certainly last year we had the lowest um, request for funding that we've had in probably the past 10 years. Uh, that holds true with this plan as well. Um, we're really trying to prioritize and you know, recognize the fact that uh, money is extraordinarily tight here across the state. So this being the old format, you'll see the um, historical data from each of our schools as well as the needs. And you did receive this in your packet, correct? You did. Good. Yep. Very good. I see a lot of yeses. That's good. <laughs> so our summary of requests for the 18-19 fiscal year are as follows. Um, we're at a total of $580,000. There are four items. Um, it is the removal and replacement of carpet and replace with VCT, that's vinyl composite tile, to be done at Charles Wright and Hanmer. Primarily at Charles Wright, it would be in the hallways. Um, the carpet's gotten to the point where it's starting to become a trip hazard. It's certainly not clean. Uh, we don't think it's really hypoallergenic anymore either. Um, we have done this work uh, over at, specifically at Emerson. If you go and visit Emerson, you'll notice that the uh, tile has been placed in all of the hallways and actually even in the classrooms. Um, number two, uh, again, keeping with the security piece, the security piece is always there. We're looking at uh, window film for security. We're looking uh, at three buildings, both Webb, Charles Wright, and Hanmer. In terms of the window film, where we have it already, um, we have installed it over at Highcrest. We have had two attempted intrusions, not by a individual during the course of the school day but over the course of a weekend we had one door this is going back to last year uh, one door that was broken uh, the window did not shatter and the individual or individuals were unable to get in over the course of this past summer we had a group of youngsters decide to use high crest as a driving range and pulled into the parking lot, got out golf clubs, and proceeded to hit probably about 150 golf balls at the side of the building. Um, our surveillance system caught them. Uh, and in addition to that, we had a grand total of one window that was broken, and it also it cracked but did not shatter and did not come through. So we have seen that that window film has been extraordinarily um, successful. 
So that is a total of $60,000. That would be something that would be installed by a, a company, by a professional. We're looking also, again, and this really sticks with the um, safety and security in our buildings, um, PA system replacement for Hanmer, Charles Wright, and Highcrest. Um, our buildings, as you know, are old. We're aware of that, and these PA systems um, have really gotten to the end of their useful life. Um, Highcrest, in particular, has been extraordinarily difficult to try and fix. Uh, we have dead spots, and um, this is something for safety and security we'd certainly like to, uh, to see happen. And then last but not least, um, item number four is the air handling unit in the gym at SDMS. This has been on in the past, um, and this was one that was actually approved by Capital Improvement. And what happened with it was the architect came in with a bid that was um, way low, uh, about uh, two-thirds lower than what the actual bid came in at. So this has been on the shelf since. So this is something that uh, we'd certainly like to do in the future. And again, looking at the history here, um, this is just data, and this is obviously up on our website. As you can see the high school, um, we're kind of finished with the high school, so the high school obviously now at this point in time is going to be uh, regular maintenance. And you'll see nothing here for future projects. Just going back to that issue with the air handling unit, the air handling unit, the original um, architectural estimate was 60000 It was far more than that. The other piece that I want to draw your attention to, and I've, I mentioned this in my communications, and you've gotten them in Friday updates, the gymnasium floor refurbishment. Um, the Silas Dean gym floor is completely refurbished. All new lines, it was completely sanded. Uh, logo was repainted, and it was resealed at no cost to the town and at no cost to the board. Mike, I, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm misunderstood. Certainly. Oh, the air handling unit replacement, I see $60,000. Correct. Did somebody bid a $60,000, or was that, what started with that $60,000? That $60,000 was the architect's estimate. The architect. The architect's okay. estimate. And then it went out to bid. Okay. Capital improvement, no, the, the town approved it. Thank you. And then it went out to bid, and, and the bids sure came in far, okay. far above I that. sure the steps Yep, are. yep. You. Emerson Williams, you can see the history and some of the things that have been done. We've done a lot of floor tile replacement, and again, at Emerson, from safety and security, all the doors at Emerson are done. Got them finished. One of the things Fred talks about for the future at Emerson, we've definitely got to do some repointing of the brickwork. Um, former board member Janet Vassell mentioned that. Mm -hmm. When you walk into the front of the building at Emerson, some of the mortar has started to come out. Um, Fred had one of those areas done around where the, uh, the lentils are, around the windows for the gym up on top. He had that repointed, but we've got more repointing to do. <clears throat> Hanmer, we've done a lot. I mentioned earlier with the uh, safety and security grant, uh, we used uh, grant money to reinforce the primary wing at Hanmer. Uh, one of the things we want to do is uh, get the carpet out of the primary wing and replace it with VCT. So that's one of our projected uh, projects for next year. And again, with the gym floor, uh, Hanmer is the only school at this point in time that hasn't been touched. It's next on the list for uh, gym floor refurbishment. Some of the things we've done in the past. And you'll notice here the complete renovation recommended. It, it's still there. Highcrest. One of the things we needed to do this year at Highcrest that was done out of the operating budget, you'll notice in 2017, a uh, burner replacement. We had a burner that uh, wore out, so that was replaced uh, this year. The gym uh, floor refurbishment is just about finished. We expect that the kids will be back in on the gym floor on Monday at Highcrest. And you see again there the complete renovation. Charles Wright. 
Charles Wright had some door hardware replaced this year under the capital improvement. Uh, Fred still has some more uh, capital improvement funds uh, to do doors this year, which he's hoping to do. And right now, with regard to the gym floor, the gym floor at Charles Wright um, has been sanded. Fred said that it went very quickly because it had been refinished back, he believes, in about 2006. So they're at the point now where they're striping, they're going to put down the logo, and we expect that depending upon the number of people that come out, um, we should start with sealing by the end of this week for Charles Wright. And future projects. Again, the HVAC unit replacement is one of those things that Fred's concerned about for the future at Charles Wright. And then we've got Webb. Again, you'll notice with Webb, we've had it on before, the window project at Webb. That we, we see that as a, as a state project at this point in time. Knowing our experience with asbestos and PCB, it's a foregone conclusion that asbestos and PCB is probably there. So we would need to take a look at the remediation of that, which you all know with our renovation at Weathersfield High School, that cost would be significantly higher than what Fred has budgeted in the past. The other piece we'd like to do at um, Webb would be to finish off the air conditioning. You know, it is a building that's probably about 80%, 90% air conditioned. There is a section that is not. So we'd certainly like to address that down the road. And again, you'll notice the cost of the window replacement. That cost in the, of the window replacement is the window replacement itself does not involve any remediation costs. And again, our experience, uh, my colleague in Glastonbury and colleague in Newington have both done window replacements and run into the same issue with uh, hazardous material. Mike, I believe sure. during the renovation, we ran into that problem with some of the windows. Okay. Because there are some of the windows that we did replace. Yes. And I believe that that happened and that was just around the time where um, the legislation changed so it's highly likely that you're going to need to obey that i i totally agree excuse me uh, yes Michael, sure the, um, where it says it shows the 850 courtyard window replacement that's the same as the uh, window replacement that's yes been listed before yes so it, it, it is specifically then it's the it's not all the windows in the building no. it's correct only, only the uh, correct yeah in oh, okay. the the inter the interior windows in the courtyard have not been replaced okay the media center. Right. The media center. The media correct center. Oh, that's right okay. Mm -hmm. okay thank you anything that comes with that and then the stillman building those of you that have been over to the Stillman building might notice that there's a little bit of construction going on. And again, I would say just a plug to all of our parents at Hanmer, thank you very much for adhering to the no more pick up and drop off in the uh, parking lot. It's been a little hectic over there. Um, we're getting a roof replacement right now. Um, this is being supported through uh, town funds as well as the utilization of our 1% reserve fund. Um, the project is um, ongoing at this point in time. All the slate has been stripped off from the roof. Waterproofing material has gone on. I'm proud to say that there are no leaks. We haven't had any leaks since this project has started. Um, they are in the process of actually uh, manufacturing and installing copper gutters and copper downspouts. They're also going to be painting soffits and the slate is on site. They are looking to, actually we're looking to begin the slate installation yesterday, but with the weather being as it is, they've held off. So we do expect them back uh, tomorrow. So they've been, made some very, very good progress. So we'll be pleased when this project is finished. Excuse me. Yes. Mr. Um, sure. How much, in that, that, now that 247 uh, 330 for the roof replacement is the total cost? I believe it's more than that. I'll get that information oh, for you. I, I was just wondering whether that was net of our 1% funds or whether that's the, the entire cost. Let me check on that yeah, for that, you. That was all. Yes, that's Absolutely. Yeah, or is that our, just our share? Let me check. I, I don't, I think we that's beyond our share. No, we yeah, had, a, we we had approximately $178,000 in the 1% reserve. And in a conversation um, following a pre-construction meeting with the town manager, um, he had stated that he did not expect to use our entire 1% reserve and expected that we would maintain about $60,000. Oh, okay. That, so, that was mainly what I was Yeah, I'll, I'll get that clarification okay, in your Friday you update. Both. Sure.
and again, future, future projects, obviously the roof replacement at this point in time at Stillman, we're, you know, once this roof gets replaced, we're pretty good. You know, we knock on wood that everything holds up with the, uh, the heating and air conditioning system. We do operating maintenance on that on a general regular basis, but, uh, you know, the building is, is quite old, but it's got very strong bones and it's, uh, it's, it's really in pretty good shape. One of the things that uh, we will need to do most likely out of our operating budget is we do have some um, repair work to do up on the second floor from the leakage. Um, we have an office in particular that the sheetrock is starting to come down on, so we're going to need to replay, um, well, replace some of the sheetrock and uh, repaint. And again, this is the history of the uh, past funding support. I may mention this when I started this presentation. In 17-18, we requested $702,500. Uh, council approved $95,000. Uh, that was for the uh, starting blocks for the pool, which are installed and functional and working, uh, as well as upgrades to doors um, and hardware, which is in the process of being done now. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the uh, modular classrooms. We have modular classrooms both at Charles Wright as well as at Highcrest. These have exceeded their useful lives. Um, Fred is talking about within the development of the 18-19 uh, budget of needing to put some funding in the budget to address some repair issues with these units. So, and the replacement cost at this point in time would be actually quite, quite expensive. Mr. Evans, those, yes, sir. Um, those estimated costs are just repairs, not replacement, correct? Yes, that's correct. And you'll notice in 1819, Fred does talk about needing to, uh, to do some minor upgrades. Carpet has, has had it. And again, the, the idea of doing these modular units, it's a short-term fix. Yeah. Um, I made mention uh, prior to the meeting about the need for the Facilities and Maintenance <coughs> Committee to... Um, to meet and really talk about the issue. You know, we've talked about class size. We've talked about um, the shape of our buildings, the age of our buildings. And, you know, we've talked a little bit before, you know, prior to the budget being as difficult as it, as it is at the state level about even the idea of redistricting. And I think that, you know, through our committee work, we need to start talking about that issue, but, you know, looking at what we have in terms of numbers, you know, maybe we need to redistrict so that we can get rid of these portables altogether and really start looking at the long term here. So the idea of replacing these portables with new portables to me is just not, it's not economically feasible and it doesn't make sound educational sense. So this is a conversation we're going to need to take up. So any other questions? Yes, sir. Just Go a ahead. quick one. Sure. Um, you, mentioned, uh, you mentioned earlier uh, about the PA system in yes. one of the schools, and I couldn't remember which one you said had uh, some dead spots. Uh, and you mentioned here in bullet three uh, on the on the summary about these systems are obviously essential for the security lockdown procedures. Yes. We, uh, when you say blind spots, that does not include in the event of a security lockdown, you're confident that that area would obviously be alerted, right? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, the school that I was mentioning, uh, Mr. Healy, was uh, Highcrest, and okay. we had certain areas within Highcrest where the speaker boxes didn't work or rooms where there were no speaker boxes at all. So what we typically have to do there, and remember, because of the support that we've had around the um, addition of radios, we have, now we don't have enough radios for all staff, but we strategically place radios in the building around those dead spots so that we can alert staff members to that. Okay. And one of the things that's nice about having our security director on board is when we do one of these lockdowns, we'll assess the areas of weakness so that we can develop plans to, to mitigate the, yeah. the weakness. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Kevin? Um, and to piggyback on Mr. Haley's question, uh, the PA system as well as the window film, are either of those like state mandate that we're required to address? No, not state mandate. Yes, sir. Mr. Cassio. Um, thank you, Mike. Uh, one of the things, so the board knows, we tried to get a meeting together for tomorrow. We could not get a quorum. It wasn't that the committee was not trying to get together. There were other things that people had to do. So that does not leave us any time this year to get this group together. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at uh, January now. So the importance of getting a committee meeting is, is crucial, um, especially when we've got all new people on it. 
Uh, one of the things that Mike had mentioned, uh, this committee was involved with the NESDAQ study and we've uh, basically reviewed that and we went on to phase two, which we met with uh, individuals to help us with our building use. And then the next phase was going to redistricting. So it's really crucial um, that we as a group continue to get together. I know committee meetings are difficult at this time, but your committee that you're on is very important. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the thoughts that we had uh, that I'm having, and I'll share it, I know the finance committee uh, meets before a board meeting. Maybe we can take your slot, because I don't know if there's overlap of, uh, of that you know, meet an hour before so we're not going on another night. So that's just another opportunity to try to get this group together for one hour. So that, that's that, but, um, you know, one of the things that you asked this committee to do is to prioritize on page uh, the four, the various projects. But you can see the history of the past funding. Um, you know, we've, last year we received 95,000, the year after we received 50. On average, the, uh, from the carpet replacement to the air handling units, we go from 85, 60, 110, 325. So to prioritize on this particular thing, um, I think we have to look strategically and figure out <clears throat> what the gamble's gonna be, and it probably will be a $60,000 gamble if the budget goes the way it's supposed to. But it's just not the committee uh, board members have suggestions. Um, feel free to contact me or Bobby and let us know mm -hmm. at this point. Thank you. Any other comments for Mr. Emmett? I just want to make, well, we um, recently visited the schools and um, one of the things we misunderstood was uh, we thought the Charles Wright pavement in the back was going to be repaved. We really misunderstood that. No, it was never on any capital improvement. Not, not through the school district. We haven't done blacktop repair. One of the things that was done at Charles, right, that was actually done out of the operating budget, we had some sidewalk um, right. trip yeah. hazards. Yeah. So Fred had sections of the sidewalk as well as the stairs repaired by our contractor that does our concrete yeah. work. But typically what happens, and I'll give you a couple of examples. We had the uh, parking lot at Webb repaved. The parking lot at Highcrest was repaved as well, and those were part of bigger town projects with regard to, uh, to paving. So typically we have not put in that request. And the other piece I know, yeah. former Mayor Montaneri was, was interested in getting that um, repaired. Um, I don't know where that went. I don't know what became of that, but that was not something that was requested and typically would be requested um, by our capital improvement. Remember that we have this scenario here where we take care of the inside of the buildings and the town takes care of the exterior of the buildings. I would imagine with the budget being as it was, uh, paving was probably kept to a minimum this year, so that may be part of the function of that. But um, this is certainly something that Fred can speak with the folks on the town side about by getting fixed. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Well, I will say too on the tours, um, you see the buildings are getting old. They're starting to show their age. But between the principals, the teachers, and the PTOs, um, they're bright, they're exciting to be in. Mm. Um, you know, the children's work is everywhere. They're as colorful as can be. Um, but it's like hiding. You know, we're putting a lot of band aids on these old buildings. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Anyone else? Okay, thank, thank you, you, Michael. We just had money. Okay, we'll move on to meetings held. We did, I almost forgot, we did have a special Board of Ed meeting retreat on December 6th. Polly, would you like to um, talk about that? Uh, I'm going to um, elaborate a little bit more on, Kevin did a really good job on the minutes. So he did. Good to find someone who's a good minute taker. Be careful, <laughs> you'll be doing it forever. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> 
Your job. <laughs> this was great. Uh, first of all, it was in, at the um, media center in the high school, which is always um, a lovely place to get together because it's so comfortable and, and, uh, and beautiful. But um, we did, um, uh, it was great because we had, um, this was really the first time we had kind of a that uh, comfortable type setting with, um, uh, I think we had all but one board member there. And so um, uh, with um, Lyle Kurtman and, um, and Jeff Eichler, it, uh, it was a very good opportunity but for everybody to get together and talk about um, where we were going as a board. Are we a working or a leadership board? Uh, where we wanted to um, kind of direct our energies. And also the really important um, issue of uh, of our decreased funding and the long-term, the fact that this is going to be a long-term issue and some of the areas that we, uh, uh, that we need to, uh, to look at outside of the box being a little bit more um, uh, uh, creative. And I think one of the things that, um, one of the big things that came from that particular discussion was that uh, we are going to, uh, the Policy and Planning Committee is going to take on the um, the project of um, looking into the unfunded mandates that um, that we have through the state and uh, reviewing some of them, seeing if there are some where we can uh, handle them differently, or if we can work with our legislative uh, state legislators to maybe have them amended or uh, or eliminated. Uh, see where because it, a lot of them are not costing, not only costing us money, but they are costing us time as well. Um, and then also reviewed and updated our strategic plan. Um, Mr. Emmett gave us some general feedback from uh, what he had gotten at that point from teachers and staff. And uh, I think, and we had more information in our uh, packet on Friday. So that and then finally uh, ended up with a discussion about uh, customer service and and some of the areas that um, in in the school system from all angles where we can um, uh, improve that, where we can be thinking about it, uh, that type of thing. So uh, I thought it was a it was a great evening, mm -hmm. and and food besides. <laughs> How bad can it be? Yep. Thank, Thank you. you, Polly. Anybody add to that? Well said. <laughs> She's at customer service. Okay, our special board of ed meeting, which we held yesterday, John Morris. Uh, yes, we met yesterday in a special session to address a student disciplinary matter, um, which is probably one of the saddest things we do as a board. I know. It comes up once in a while. Okay, thank you. Um, school projects and building committee. Mr. Emmett? Yes, I attended that uh, meeting yesterday. Uh, it was interesting. They brought up the fact that we've kind of been at this, realistically speaking, since about 2008. So we celebrated our, we'll be celebrating our 10 year anniversary with this particular project. Uh, a couple of items that uh, came up, uh, we did get uh, architect and um, contractor reports. They are working on change orders now with the state. Um, there were a total of 16 change orders that were submitted. I believe as of last night they are up to change order number five, so they've got a long way to go. Uh, in addition to that, Mr. Bridges reported last night that um, we will be receiving rebates from uh, both Eversource as well as CNG um, with regard to our use of high efficiency materials. Uh, he also reported that the issue that we had with the transformer, uh, which was damaged, I want to say back in September of 2014, I believe it was. Um, it was a very costly repair, uh, and there was uh, no one that really wanted to take responsibility of that. <clears throat> this repair was in the range of about $100,000. Um, with the way things settled out, uh, the town would be responsible for only 2500 of that. Um, you didn't divulge exactly how everything would be broken out in terms of what Eversource would cover. Um, but expect that in, uh, in a future meeting. Um, the other piece too, at this point in time, we're getting, you know, punch list is done. Um, we're getting down. We got uh, the approval of the uh, last batch of technology at the last uh, mm -hmm. council meeting. Very excited about that. So uh, once we get the purchase order, we will be um, getting the last batch of technology. That technology will be coming out of the project. So it's, it was budgeted within the project and we will have access to the reimbursement. Uh, at the previous board meeting, Diane had asked a question about the 
uh, reimbursement and what we've gotten from the state that was included in your Friday packet. Um, so there's still about, uh, about I want to say off the top of my head, about 6.7 million that we're still waiting uh, to receive back from the state. Um, our reimbursement rate is at 51%. So with that, that's building. Uh, Thank building you. Command. Thank you. Any Thank questions you. on that? Okay. So meeting scheduled. It is the holiday, but when we come back, whoop. Am I forgetting a lot tonight? <laughs> Kevin's right next to me, and we did just have our Finance and Information Management Committee meeting. Kevin? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we quickly went over the uh, budget scenarios for not only this fiscal year and next. Uh, uh, running down the scenarios, right now we have a, we had a budget cut in October once the state um, passed its state budget, a $467,000 cut to the town. Uh, Weathersfield Public Schools absorbed the cut by uh, a 70% spending cap as well as leaving three positions vacant. Uh, beyond that, within the same state budget, um, we were notified of a, a further cut to the school system of $867,000. <clears> Excuse me. And uh, the board will be meeting with town officials in early January to uh, discuss how the town and the school system together will address um, the cut. And unfortunately, to add, um, Bad on top of worst is uh, the state has uh, is already tr in a budget deficit um, on the budget they did pass in October. Uh, we have a two hundred and seven million dollar deficit, which triggers a uh, the state must enact a budget. I'm sorry, a uh, deficit mitigation plan, which means that they're one percent out of the uh, state operating budget. It's uh, yet to be determined how the general assembly and the governor will uh, will address this and when they will address it. But it's uh, fair to say that uh, municipalities should expect another target on their back moving forward. Um, and beyond that, uh, Mr. Kazaka from the business office was kind enough to present us a list of unfunded state mandates um, that the uh, town must address and the cost associated with them uh, so that we could perhaps take advantage of the current budget climate the state is in so that we can kind of work with the state to ease some of these mandates. Mm. Um, and that was it for finance. Uh -huh. Thank you, Kevin. Any comments on that? Polly. I just have one question. Um, considering the, um, and, I, and I know that uh, you're going to be sitting with uh, a town um, in January, but I'm wondering, in light of the, the state's situation, the cuts to, um, to the towns, is the MBR going to play in at all, or are they, uh, will they have to suspend that? Um, because that's statutory. Correct, right. it, so, it, and it was not changed in the uh, the budget, and it will be in our it will be in your packet next time. But it wasn't changed, so we'll be working with the town on that. Because if we do get a cut at all, it still be fall under that same statute. It does still. Okay, I just wanted to be sure. All right. Anyone else with questions, for Kevin? Okay, then we'll move on. Um, WEC, our Weathersfield Early Childhood Collaborative, does have a meeting on January 8th, 2018 at 430. That's when we all get back to business. Okay, is there any unfinished business? All right, is there anyone wishing to make a public comment? Come on up to the podium and state your name and address. And may I remind you, you have a five minute limit. Okay. Are there any board comments? Anyone? John. Thank you, Bobby. I just had to, the opportunity to thank the uh, Weathersfield High School Band Ensemble. Uh, last Thursday, they joined um, together to, to come to my annual meeting at the Radisson Hotel in Cromwell with uh, the Flute with Leah, clarinet, Nicole and Matt, saxophone, Anthony, trumpet, Chris and Anna, baritone, Gabby and tuba, Nate. What they, every year I bring in the high school, uh, whether it was uh, Aaliyah Livingston that sang last year, but we have an annual convention with over 150 people that attend. This year I brought in the band, uh, the ensemble, and they did the national anthem for us. So it was a great uh, response. They, um, 
I want to say they got a standing ovation, but they're already standing. But you know, <laughs> the, the people were really, really uh, thrilled uh, to see that the, um, you know, this is part of what we have at Weathersfield High School. And every year they, they wonder what's, who's coming next. So it's a real highlight. And it was a surprise for everybody. So with the thanks of uh, Mike Bowles, uh, Mike Maltesi, and John Babel uh, for helping me put this together. So it was great, a great, great, great opportunity. Thank you. Anyone else? Ginger? I just wanted to say how much I really appreciate the Friday updates that come in from the principals. Um, unfortunately, they're not here tonight. They probably have many other things to do this time of year. But those Friday updates are so wonderful to me. They make me want to go back to elementary school <laughs> because there's great pictures of kids doing fun things like crab walking on their backs around cones. And um, I really loved the, uh, from Silas Dean Middle School, the Math Counts video challenge that's starting up. And if it weren't for the fact that I'm flying to California for my brother's wedding, I would be there because that <laughs> sounds like a hoot. I am really excited about that program. <laughs> There's nothing better than making kids be excited about math. I'm a math geek myself, and I love it when other people love it too. So. Um, and the hour of code that Mr. Emmett was talking about, that really sounded great too. So I just uh, would like to thank the principals for the time they spend putting those together. Thank great. you. Great, thank you, Ginger. Anyone else? Holly? Uh, I just had a couple of things. Um, one was I attended um, a uh, hunger action team meeting on Friday and um, I just thought I'd um, give you kind of a little update on a couple of things. Um, one was that they, um, the, of the food share um, was able to serve 136 meal, or I'm sorry, meals to 136 households uh, for Thanksgiving. And um, at, as you may recall, there was a, um, at the uh, high school um, football game, of the Thanksgiving football game, there were food bins there, and they were also collecting money. And they collected $120 and uh, also five bins of food. So um, we, uh, we got a, some great support for, from our uh, school uh, family as far as that goes. There were a couple of other things that, that came out. One was um, I was... Um, I had, had heard kind of in, uh, in general about the fact that uh, Mr. Moore um, uh, sponsored or sponsored a free breakfast week uh, last week at the high school. And um, it, well, I was really excited about this when I saw the, uh, the numbers for it. And I think that, uh, Mr. Emmett, you have the numbers for us for, on Friday. But well. one of the things that... Um, that I was really pleased to see was that for the cost, which was somewhere around, I believe you said it was not even two thousand um, dollars. The uh, uh, a free breakfast or free breakfast was provided to or made available to every student in um, uh, the high school last week, regardless of whether they were free and reduced or not. And what was really great to see was the fact that. Um, the numbers, uh, how the numbers increased over the um, over the week as it became more um, more apparent, evidently to the kids, and more available. And so I think that twofold. Obviously, one of the things that, that we are uh, continue to be committed to is is um, to expanding our free and reduced program because we do know that um, the um, that we're not reaching all of the kids in the school system who are um, eligible for it. But also, to me, it's a great way of raising awareness to all kids about how important the breakfast is. And um, uh, one of the things I would think, too, is just the fact of, of the being able to come in in the morning and have breakfast available and taking the time and going into the cafeteria and the camaraderie and, and that type of thing. So. Um, I, the the uh, Jamie uh, from Chartwells had provided this um, information, and he said that they are also trying to work more with Silas Dean. I guess Silas Dean Middle School has the lowest numbers right now in um, participants, so they are working on trying to um, 
trying to expand that program. But I was really thrilled about that. And I think that there are a lot of ways that um, uh, I'd love to see us be able to do that uh, on a regular basis because I think it's a terrific way to develop the, the, um, the camaraderie and also the raise awareness. Uh, the other thing that um, I, th that was mentioned at the um, Hunger, Hunger Action Team meeting uh, on Friday was um, Emily Hayward, who is um, uh, the family and consumer science teacher at Silas Dean, did a presentation. She is um, participating in this program called the King Arthur Challenge. Um, which was developed by the King Arthur Flower Company. And what they do is it, it's part of, a, um, part of their program to teach students uh, how to make homemade bread. And also it's designed to help kids to understand about giving back. So the idea is that the, uh, she as part of her regular curriculum does, they do bake bread from scratch. You need to find out what what day that is, so we can go in. But uh, they, do, they, they do already learn, learn how to do that. But the great thing is, um, and, and this goes back and speaks to um, our thinking outside of the box as far as trying to um, find some creative funding is that uh, King Arthur does provide the flour and the yeast and also um, bags and, and tags and all that type of thing. So, but the big, uh, the, the catch is that the students and the, the teacher must determine, they ha half of the materials, the flour and the yeast that, um, and other materials that are provided uh, must be used to bake bread for the students to donate to an outside group. And so in order to participate and, and get the um, materials and the grant as it were, um, they have to decide where they're going to donate this bread. So there were some ideas that went back and forth on that. And um, because they, ha they have enough to be able to make breads or uh, loaves or, or um, rolls. So, and then they have the rest of it that they can use on their own. So I uh, thought that was kind of a, an interesting um, idea. And also a great way to um, to buy some, buy some supplies without, uh, I, I know it's, it's probably not a huge amount of money, but it's mm. good to know that our staff <coughs> is thinking in terms of where they can get some resources from outside. Thank you. Anyone else? I want to thank Polly for sharing that. I have no information on that, and that, that was a great share. But yeah, this was a new thing. <laughs> this yeah, was new to me, totally too. New thing. That was wonderful. Well, Hunger Action Group is fabulous, too. And um, I'm going to piggyback on that. On Thursday, December 7th, I attended the Keen on Kids Coalition meeting. Um, and this um, group is just outstanding. The agenda started with a review of the current after-school program, which the Keen Foundation runs. It has 883 enrollees in the elementary school after-school programs. And there are scholarships available. Um, they asked if I would tell everybody to look for the Park and Rec brochure and the December 28th rear reminder. The Keene Foundation is also sponsoring the upcoming Vacation Kids Day on the 27th of December when the kids are on vacation. It's a very popular event and look at their website for a flyer. They have drop-in open basketball on Saturdays for different age groups and Diane, I'm gonna remember with you that we were talking about these kids who aren't on teams anymore. And I spoke to them about that, and they're also looking into the possibility of opening it up Sunday, too. Um, the library was there, represented by Brooke Berry, and she reported that the new teen librarian has been there for two weeks. Um, they have yoga and origami, but she's looking to provide other programming for the 50 middle schoolers who come to the library after school. Um, Park and Rec stated that they did the Santa pancake breakfast and had a record attendance, and all those proceeds go to therapeutic rec for equipment and games, which I did not know. Social and youth service programs reported on the success of their after school tutoring and intramurals at Silestine Middle School, which also is sponsored by the Keene Foundation. So needless to say, Keene for Kids and the Keene Foundation continues to be an unbelievable support for our Wethersfield children. And awesome work by all, and thank you. 
And so finally, on behalf of the Board of Ed, I want to extend many happy wishes to all as we enjoy the wonderful diversity in our town. So I want to wish you happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, happy Kwanzaa, happy Three Kings Day, and a very happy and healthy new year from the board. Well, and, and, uh, <laughs> didn't want to say it. <laughs> you said to air my grievance. <laughs> Okay, Justin, you could say it. Any comments of life at the high school? Um, Wethersfield well, High School will be hosting a wrestling tournament this Saturday at 9 a.m. in both gyms. The choral concert is this Thursday at 7 p.m. in the auditorium, and the instrumental concert will be next Thursday also at 7, 7 p.m. in the auditorium. Girl, the Girls Basketball Holiday Classic will be the 27th and 28th of this month in the gym. Also, WHS clubs are holding a variety of fundraisers this month. The National Honor Society is selling carnations. The National Art Honor Society is selling holiday postcards. And the class of 2020 is holding a fundraiser to benefit the Connecticut Children's Medical Center. For further information on any of those, please contact Mrs. Clark at the high school. And in addition to those fundraisers, my own club um, will be collecting sealed and unopened makeup, makeup products that we will be bringing to the Mercy House Women's Shelter in Hartford. Donations can be brought to the high school main office on or before December 21st, and any questions can be directed to me. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Diane. I just have one question. Um, will we get a report, I noticed, um, what was it, last Thursday or Friday was pajama day. Yes. Will we get a report as to how much Yes. They, um, they took in? Yeah, absolutely. I was going to work, I saw on a very cold day, like, <laughs> that, that is uh, a hugely popular uh, fundraiser. So we are um, receiving the monies in at central office from the schools. And uh, as soon as I get the final tally, I'll definitely get that in the Friday update. Yeah. Can we do one of those for the roof for Stillman? <laughs> no. can, can I just make one? one sure. Yeah, no, no, a fundraiser. Oh. <laughs> we'll put them all You're going to have a pajama party at Stillman. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Uh, no, I just wanted to say, ba based on, uh, on Justin's report, it just goes to show how much um, this high school is being used, even outside of the, um, mm -hmm. uh, of the school hours, the fact that it, it uh, not only at this time of the year when we have things going on at, uh, at night, but also the weekends, it is, uh, um, it is certainly in use, which is absolutely wonderful, and I hope we can maintain that. And I've even, I've even noticed throughout the school year, there have been so many fundraisers and so many positive things happening, both for the community and the school, and I think it's incredible to see um, the whole school kind of come together and support those things, and it's mm -hmm. fantastic. Justin, you mentioned so many of them. Where do they start from? Do the kids start them in the clubs and they have this idea and they move so, with it? Um, National Honor Society usually does their carnation sales. I think they've been doing that for a while. Um, art, I'm not sure where they, I think students came up with that one. And then um, class of 2020, I think that that was I don't know, looking to Mr. Moore for, uh, <laughs> <laughs> couldn't tell ya, <laughs> but um, yeah, so it's, it's but really- But I didn't mean to put um, you on the spot, it's just, it's great that there's so many. Um, yeah, I think it's student and advisor um, input for those. Great. Okay. Anyone else with anything? Okay, may I make, have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. A second? second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? This meeting is adjourned. Thank you all and good night. That's right.